name and your high school in the chat. Also, Kofi, if you could drop the link to the Google form, if you haven't filled out the Google form yet to get on our mailing list, please fill that out too. Coach Kofi's about to drop that in the chat. What's up, Jaden? What's up, Josh? What's up, Taylor? Thanks, Kofi. Maybe drop it again, actually, because it's going to get bumped back when everyone introduces themselves. What's up, Ashton? All right, as you guys are coming in, what's up, Coach Robinson? As you're coming in, just drop your name and your school in the chat. What's up, Tyler? What's up, Robert? What's up, Shane? What's up, Jonah? What's up, Jameer? What's up, Will? And again, if it's your first time, what's up, Asa? I see you. What's up, Coach Frank? As you guys are coming in, if it's your first time joining, um, if you could just, what's up, Deshaun? If you could just fill out the Google form that Coach Kofi's going to drop in the chat, that'd be great. What's up, Patrick? What's up, Charlie? What's up, Oliver? What's up, Ruby? Ruby, are you going to St. Francis College in Brooklyn next year? Or St. Francis Prep? What's up, Mason? Got you. Cool. We got uh, Alan Rodriguez from Holy Cross here. I know that's the rivalry. Again, if this is your first time joining one of these workshops, welcome. We're super excited to have you. Please fill out the Google form link that Coach Kofi just dropped. All right, and if you're just joining now, if you haven't done it yet, please put your name and your high school. Um, Coach Kofi, if you could just open up the waiting room so anyone could join now, that'd be great, or just keep an eye on the waiting room. I know people are gonna continue coming in. What's up, Sam? What's up, Malcolm? Again, as you're coming in, put your name, your high school, if this is your first time. If you haven't filled out the Google form, please fill that out. We're gonna get started in one minute. What's up, Gavin? Welcome. What's up, Jack? Welcome back. Awesome, if you haven't introduced yourselves, please, again, put your name, high school in the chat. If you haven't filled out, the Google form, it's like five chats up. Please fill that out too. All right, cool. So what's up, Nina? Welcome. We're going to get started. You guys can keep introducing yourself as the chat in the chat as you come in. So this workshop is Let's Get Recruited, right? A couple of weeks ago, right, we were talking more about the college process, more about applying to college, things we need to know. This one's going to be more basketball focused. Um, just to, to reintroduce myself or to introduce myself for those of you who are, haven't joined yet, my name is Yona Greenstein. Um, I played and coached at a small division three school upstate. I run the Riverside Impact Program at Riverside Church, which is an AAU program and an education program. I help run the Academic Elite Showcase at House of Sports each year, which happened in September. Um, and as my main job, I work for a nonprofit that does college counseling. We support over a thousand students in 14 high schools in New York City. So from my experience, no basketball from being a college coach, from helping kids get recruited, and also know the college process in general. Um, really excited. We've got two guys here. Um, this picture is hilarious. We've got two guys from the Riverside Impact team, um, played for us last year, going to college next year to play ball. If you guys could introduce yourselves, Alan first, that'd be great. What's up? My name is Alan. Um, I went to Holy Cross. I played um, basketball for four years. Um, I played um, for Coach Yona at Yona Impact. I mean, my fault, Riverside Impact. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I can say. Awesome. Braylon? Uh, hello, my name is Braylon, and I go to a warm world combo. I used to go. I committed to Madai College. And I went to a small school, but Yona helped me get recruited. And yeah, that's about it. Awesome. So these guys are going to be sharing their experiences, some advice just from going through the recruiting process tonight. Um, reminder, right, this is the third workshop we have in the Student Handbook Series, Student Athlete Handbook Series. A few weeks ago, we started off with NCAA eligibility. Then we talked about colleges in New York and beyond. 
today is Let's Get Recruited, which I think should be a lot of fun. Hopefully for you guys too, I think probably the most basketball focused one. Um, and then next week we're going to have the last workshop, which is going to be focused on paying for college in terms of financial aid and scholarships. Right. I'm going to do a quick recap. Right. Some of you guys have been to these. Some of you have not. I just want to make sure we all have the same knowledge joining. So, right. First workshop was NCAA eligibility 101. Um, right. Just some real quick things to remember from that. The NCAA calculates your GPA based on core classes. Right. It doesn't count plus or minuses. So you need a certain GPA according to the NCAA, which is different than your high school GPA to play to get a scholarship for, for division one or for division two real quick in the chat i know i asked you guys a couple of weeks ago too does anyone remember what the division one requirements are right for gpa someone put 2.3 does anyone remember the gpa and the sat requirements for division one taylor put 890 close yeah robert exactly so right division one requirements right at minimum is a 2.3 gpa and a 980 SAT, right? That's the minimum you need to get a division one scholarship. Some division one schools will want more than that, right? Columbia here in the city and Ivy League school will want more than that. Does anyone remember for division two? For division two, what the minimum requirements are? You could put it in the chat for both GPA and SAT. All right, cool, Robert, I see you, Josh. See you, Devin. Yeah, you guys got it, right? For Division Two, it's 2.2 and 920 SAT. So a little bit lower, but still, like, you need at least a 2.2, at least a 920 SAT, right? And if your GPA is a little higher, then it's called a sliding scale. Your SAT can drop a little bit, but that's the minimum. Some schools will want more than that. Um, good job remembering that. The other thing is, right, from NCAA eligibility is you must be certified by the NCAA eligibility center to get an athletic scholarship. If you're a junior going into your senior na senior year right now um, and you have aspirations to play in Division One or Division Two, you should definitely register. The website is right here, eligibilitycenter.org. Right? Next thing we talked about in our last workshop was, right, New York college landscape. So there's three types of college in New York State. Um, can someone real quick just type the three types of colleges that we talked about in the chat? If we get to hear from a couple of people. Yep. Sam, you're on it, right? Three types of colleges. Jack, you're on it, right? CUNY, um, just put some basic facts about it. Those are the public colleges that are in the city. Some of you might know John Jay, Baruch, Hunter, right? BMCC, Hostos, um, right? Some things to keep in mind. They have the lowest tuition. Um, they usually don't have dorms. They're usually bigger colleges. Um, they're normally pretty diverse because most of the people who go there are from the city. And, right, they're pretty strict with their admissions requirements. Because they're big colleges, like they'll say the GPA, we looked at it last time, an SAT they're looking for, and that's pretty strict. All CUNYs are Division Three, except for Queens College and College of Staten Island, which are D2. Next is SUNY, right? So SUNY colleges, 64 public colleges all over New York State, all over the place. There's ones eight hours away. There's ones right in Westchester, a half hour away from the city. Higher tuition than CUNY, but lower than private. All different types of schools, big schools, small schools, schools in cities, schools in the middle of the country, right? And all are Division Three, except for four of them are Division One. And then lastly, private. There's hundreds of private colleges in New York State alone, thousands all over the country. They have the highest tuition, but they can provide a lot of financial aid. They have all different types of colleges, but normally they're the smallest. Normally, also, they're the least diverse, unfortunately. Um, and they're normally the most flexible with admissions requirements. So even if they say you need a 90, right, you can write a really good essay, get a really re good recommendation, more flexibility there. Um, other quick recaps. There are some, yep, yeah, good point, Coach Robinson, right? So for SUNY and CUNY, it's public colleges, two-year schools, and four-year schools. Thank you for pointing that out, right? When creating a college list, it's important to have a mix of safety, target, and reach colleges. We talked about that last time. Um, in the chat, if a couple of people can just remind us, what, is, what does that mean? What does safety mean? What does target mean? What does reach mean? You could just put one if you only remember one of them. Right. Remember, we talked about you're making a college list. You're figuring out what schools to look at. We looked at the GPA, the SAT they're looking for. Right. 
Exactly. Safety, target reach. So safety, Marcus put overqualified. Yup. Sam with the literal definition. Exactly, right? So, ooh, Marcus, you're off on reach. Reach, target is meets requirements, right? Reach means you got to reach for it, um, right? So safety, yeah, all good, Marcus. I appreciate it. So safety means, exactly. Um, safety means, right, that your GPA and SAT are higher than what the college is asking for or what they normally accept. Um, a target means it's exactly the same thing. And a reach, right, means that you have a lower GPA and SAT than what they normally ask for. So we want to apply to a mix of those schools. And then lastly, there's specific programs to New York State. There's the Excelsior Scholarship that's free tuition at CUNY and um, SUNY colleges for households that make less than 125K. Uh, it does not include room and board. And then we also talked about opportunity programs, right? That's based on how household size and income. Um, it lowers the admissions requirements. If you normally need the 85, you would only need the 80. It provides a lot of different type of support, including up to full financial aid. Um, and it goes by different names, which could be confusing, right? So CUNY schools have SEEK and College Discovery. SUNY has EOP. Private schools have HEOP. So you're like, why are you saying all this stuff, right? We're saying all this stuff because all this information is connected, right? As we're, we're about to talk basketball and talk recruiting, when you're being recruited, you need to know, is this a CUNY school, a SUNY school, a private college, right? What are they looking for? Um, what types of financial aid are out there? So I just want to make sure that we're on board with all those things. Um, next thing is we have four college coaches that are going to be joining us over the course of tonight. So are any of you guys here yet? Yeah, Coach Centil, I see you. Uh, if any of you guys are on this, I see you, Coach Clores. It's hard for me to look at all the participants. Can you come off mute and just introduce yourselves? Coach Shoner, Jimmy Bali. So, Coach Shoner, anything you want to say? That's a short intro. That's Listen, I got nothing, man. If you need a cut, come on through Utica. I get, I get you right. I got you. <laughs> Can you tell Alan to get off his phone during this, too? Nah, not until he gets on campus and I catch him with it in class. Then I'll tell him. I got you. Coach Shoner, thanks for coming. He's from SUNY Poly. Um, it's a SUNY Division III school upstate. He's also coached at SUNY Delhi. Um, and I don't remember your resume offhand, but I know a couple of the other um, two-year SUNYs here in New York. Um, any of the other coaches on? If you guys can introduce yourselves, that'd be awesome. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Clares. I'm the coach at the City College of New York, one of the CUNY schools. Um, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Awesome. Um, really excited to have you, Coach Clark. City College, as you guys um, should know, may or may not know, is up in Harlem, like 135th Street. Coach Clark is also his coach at St. Thomas Aquinas, which is a D2 school, so it's great to have his perspective, having coached at multiple levels. Um, and Coach Sentil? Hey, guys. Shiva Sentil. I'm the head coach at uh, SUNY Canton, so that's really upstate, uh, way up north, but uh, nice to be here for you guys. Awesome. My bad for butchering your name, Coach, too. No, you're good, dude. Um, awesome. So, yeah. And Coach has been a coach at Chicago, Clarkson, and Purchase. Is that true? Yep. yep. So, all different colleges, different levels academically and basketball-wise. So, we have these guys just sharing their own experiences here tonight. Um, really appreciate you guys being here. If you guys have questions for them at literally any point, please ask. Um, you know, do not hesitate. And Coach Abe is going to be joining, too, from McAllister, which is a school out in Minnesota. Um, private college, he'll share more from there too. Awesome. So before we dive into things tonight, right, just a few things to remember. Everything we've done so far has been like information that is true, right? Like the NCA eligibility requirements, there's no gray area. You need a certain GPA. You need a certain SAT. Same when we were talking about last week, right? The SUNY opportunity programs are called EOP. That's a fact, right? That's something that you guys need to know. It's knowledge. Tonight, we're sharing more advice, right? So everything that's coming from me, from Braylon Allen, from the coaches, right? It's not a fact. We might say slightly different things um, and just want to make sure that you guys are acknowledging that. Second thing is that we're going to talk a little bit about timeline. Different types of college basketball programs recruit on different timelines. So again, right, this is advice. It's not 100% written in stone, but that's something for you guys to keep in mind. We're going to say certain things like this is what you should do. But for example, schools that are more competitive academically <laughs> normally recruit earlier in the recruiting cycle, right? For schools that aren't as competitive academically, aren't as hard to get into, normally recruit later in the cycle. So that's a difference, right? Division one schools, 
a lot of times we'll try to recruit early. Division two schools will try to recruit late, right? These are like big statements. They're not always true, but it's just to point out that like different types of schools recruit in different ways. Um, Right. Other things to remember. And then like, we're giving you advice. This is to empower you to create as many options as possible to be a student athlete at the next level. But as no much, no matter how much you use this advice, your grades, your game and your character are by far the most important things in your recruiting process. And this is especially true for guys and girls in ninth and 10th grade who are a little bit younger. The recruiting process probably isn't going to start until 11th grade for you at most levels. So this is good for you to know for the future and a little bit now maybe, but the most important thing is to keep your grades strong, keep your game strong, and your character strong, all right? On that note, we're gonna jump in. There's gonna be 10 different tips um, that we're gonna present one by one. Um, coaches, you guys can kind of share your perspective on the tip, and then Braylon and Alan, you guys can kind of share it from your experience and your perspective, and if any other questions or anything else like that pops up, um, you guys can obviously share that too. And everyone else, if you have a question, if you have something that you want to add, put it in the chat or take yourself off mute. This is for everyone to join in together. Sound good? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Right? Tip number one, be as proactive as possible. Do not wait. There are thousands of basketball players in New York City alone that want to play college basketball. If you wait for someone to come find you, right? That might not happen. It might be too late. You guys need to be proactive in terms of your recruitment, right? Three things I put here. You need to know your own information so you can send it to people. You need to reach out and communicate with coaches, right? I'd say beginning in 11th grade with this information. And you need to stay on top of your college process because you can be talking to 100 college coaches at once. Um, but if you're not doing the applications, if you're not doing the financial aid, it doesn't matter, right? Those these processes, recruiting and college, go together. They go hand in hand. Um, college coaches, anything else in terms of this? One of the things I would mention is if you have, everybody has a highlight film, right? So if you have access to full game film, that's certainly something that coaches would appreciate. Um, the other thing too is since you won't be able to be on campus for a little bit of time, uh, a great step is to actually go on a virtual campus tour, go to the school site, look at some of the majors, look at some of the things outside of basketball uh, to get a better idea of what schools you may want to reach out to as well. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else that this, that this brings up from your guys in? And Alan and Braylon, you guys can hop in too from just having gone through this process also. Uh, the one thing I'll say is um, just from being at a couple different types of schools, just if no have a good feel for what type of school you're looking to go to just whether what, what fits your academic profile what fits your athletic profile and then kind of talk to coaches about what their recruiting timeline is because so, just I know for example when I was at the University of Chicago we were recruiting the 11th grade class uh in November of their junior year well now as soon as you can obviously we're a little bit later so kind of understanding what types of schools recruit, uh, what their timeline is and asking coaches and just being transparent with the whole process, I think is going to help a lot. And just understanding what type of school fits you guys best early on in the process. Yeah, I would, I would piggyback on what Yona said about knowing your um, test scores and your GPA. You know, like I, I tell it to guys, everybody knows how many points per game they average. Everybody knows how many assists they average. Um, you, you can't hide that stuff. And so if you tell, if you tell a coach, yeah, I got a three Oh and 1100. And then when we get the paperwork and you've got a two, four and a nine, 10, it's, it's a red flag. Um, because we know, you know, the information, it just, you know, it's an opportunity to be honest and transparent. Um, you look better telling the truth than sugarcoating it for a little while and us finding out on the flip side. For sure. And then there was a question in the chat. What is the best way to communicate to get this information with coaches from Robert? You guys have any thoughts on that? I know it can vary. Um, for me personally, just email us. Uh, we look at every single recruit that emails us. Um, we read every email. And then specifically, if you have highlight tapes, we watch every single highlight tape. So the best thing you could do is reach out to the coaching coaches staff, reach out to the head coach, assistant coaches, and uh, I know most places definitely read as many emails as they can. For sure. One, one of the things I'll, I'll add to what, what Coach just said was 
if you if you can um, make the email a little less generic and you could be a little bit more specific that you're specifically reaching out to this school because of this reason. Um, we look at every email, but the guys who are more specific and have done a little bit of research and have a little more interest, those ones really stand out. So it may be a good way for you if you're really interested in a school, uh, make that email a little bit more particular to that school and that might help you as well. Definitely. Um, Braylon, Allen, does this resonate with you guys at all? I mean, you guys had a little bit of support along the way from your families, me and Coach Kofi, but anything that, that this rings a bell for you? What I would say is, you know, like, if you would like to go to a certain school that, you know, you want to go play basketball at, the ideal thing to do is to email the coach, you know, try to be cool with the coach, you know, because that's the person who's going to pick you up. So you can send them, you know, highlight tapes and stuff, just like, you know, everyone else said, basically. Awesome. Cool. I feel like you should get in touch with, like, a lot of schools because – you never know where you're going to end up at, so you should just try to, like, stay close with them. Always know it's your decision at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. Um, Coach Coach Tony has a question. Uh, do you call, would you college coaches rather see kids at camps or at tournaments? I would think that answer might vary, but anything there is helpful. Doesn't matter. Cool. Good to know. Um... Coach, um, Coach Kofi asked a good question. Like, say you want to email a coach, where would you find their email? So almost every college program, uh, if you on their athletic website, they have their the coach's email addresses. At least the head coach's email address will be there. So for most places, so say if you know about, say if you're for SUNY Can, even if you don't know exactly what our athletic website is, if you Google SUNY Can Athletics. The first tab is going to be our athletic website. Once you click on it, you'll be able to find the tabs for men's basketball and then coaching staff and all that. So uh, all that information is available right on our athletic website. And I think that's true for most schools as well. Yeah, agreed. And that's like a good life lesson. Like pretty much any piece of information is Googleable. Um, I don't know if that's a word, but like if you're looking for contact information, like go out and Google it. Um, I'm going to keep moving with this just to get to the next one too. These are great questions. We're going to circle back. Um, Academic elite camps, I don't, I can't speak on the coronavirus pandemic situation. Um, so I don't have an answer for you, Will. Um, when you should reach out, start reaching out to coaches, I'd say 11th grade. Um, I'd say like if you're a division one player, it might make sense to reach out in 10th grade. Um, I'd say if you're high academic um, for division three, then you want to start reaching out, like coach was saying, like early 11th grade. Um, and then I'd say like if you're not high, by high academic, I mean like high 80s, you know, probably 1100 SAT like then you'd start and above, then you'd start want to start reaching out, um, you know, early junior year and everyone else uh, late junior year is when you should start reaching out. Um, moving to the next tip, right? This is a would you rather. You guys have an A or B question, right? Because there's a lot of different factors that factor into the recruiting process. So thinking of AAU, right? AAU is on hold right now, but would you rather A, play down a grade on a sneaker sponsor team or B, play in your current grade with a non-sneaker sponsored team. I want to hear from everyone. Throw A or B in the group chat. Wow. There is a consensus. OK. You're allowed to say A. A is OK. A is actually the right answer. No, it's not the right answer. What's up, Coach? I see you. Coach Abe, you want to introduce yourself? Trying to cause confusion? Hey, uh, Yona, can you hear me OK? Yeah, hear you great. Great. Sorry for showing up late to the party. Thanks for inviting me. And um, I see a few names here I know. My name is Abe Waldeslassie. I'm the head men's basketball coach at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm guessing there probably aren't many Minnesotans on this call right now, Yona. Is that fair to say? That I think you're holding it down. <laughs> For the whole state. It's been a, a, a very chaotic time here, to say the least. But um, 
it's uh, really exciting just to be here tonight and to listen and to share kind of my experiences, but also to learn fr from everyone else. So, Cool. Yeah. Um, I saw people answer this mainly B. We had some questions. If coaches had, a, do coaches, do either of you have a preference? I know it's not like a, such a clear answer. It depends a lot on context. Yeah, I see a lot of shrugs. Um, I guess the one thing I'll say is, uh, this is because we're Division Three. Like, if a if you're on if you're on an EYBL team, we're probably not going to be able to see you play. But then again, it's it's just, it's a grain of salt because if you're on an EYBL team, you're you, you're probably a scholarship player. So it just kind of depends. But uh, for the most part. Uh, the other thing I'll say is, I don't know if I've ever seen a 16 under game for real. Like, I'm not, I don't know if like, and because I've only, I've only coached division three, but I've coached for six, seven years now. And I don't think I've ever watched an AAU 16 under basketball game where I've, I've watched a, hundreds and hundreds of 17 under games. And it's just kind of because of the division three timeline. So that's why I would, I would say for most players playing up, I mean, playing at your grade level on a non sneaker team is probably better off than playing down in a, sneaker team yeah I don't think there's a right answer in this it brings me to my next one though which is I think like you want to be seen by as many college coaches as possible right and there's some questions in terms of what that looks like but I think like a real part of your recruiting process is again you want to reach out but you also want to give your chance like yourself a chance to be seen um that's something I see a lot having coached AU in the city is like one of the first questions that when I'm talking to a kid about like hey you know, would you be interested in playing on this team? Is like, are you guys on a circuit? Um, and like, there's a lot of teams on circuits now. There's like three different Adidas circuits. Like, I don't know what it means exactly to be on a circuit outside of EYBL, but like, right, those are the types of decisions where like, it's not necessarily about the title of the circuit or about getting gear. You want to be seen by as many college coaches as possible, right? So hopefully AAU comes back at some point, right? That means playing on an AAU team that plays a decent schedule, um, and where you get playing time. And then obviously you need to go out and perform. But again, like if you're playing for an AAU team um, and you're only playing in local tournaments, you're only playing in like zero gravity, not to knock zero gravity. Um, but like that's going to be harder to be seen than if you're playing in like hoop group tournaments that have a lot of college coaches. Um, going to camps and showcases as much as you have the means, like those can be really expensive. Um, have and send video and then share your schedule, right? Like you want to share your high school schedule and you want to let coaches know where they can see you, um, where, when they're communicating with you. Um, college coaches is, um, we got in a lot of questions right now, especially like right now, how people can get seen. Um, what, like, what advice would you have for this both in general and then specifically right now with, um, the pandemic going on? For me, I would say the best way is, is if you have game film, um, you know, we're all, I guess, flying blind a little bit with not being able to see guys in person, um, you know, game film. And I think as coaches, we're calling people we know, um, and trusts for feedback on players. For sure. So don't be a jerk because that, if you're, yeah, if, right, if coaches are asking for someone else's opinion on you, if you rub someone else the wrong way, right, that, that can travel really fast. What else, especially right now, what, what would you guys recommend for, for kids, especially in the class of 2021? Um, we, we've, had a, we've had a lot of guys that have actually gotten creative and they've been proactive in um, following us on Twitter and on Instagram and some of our social media accounts. Um, in addition to either sending an email, sending film over, it's just more ways that we're able to, to see you, which is, which is important. Um, I also think too, having a, either a field level profile, an NCSA profile, um, some coaches look at that all the time. Some of them don't look at it um, as much, but having a ton of information on those platforms, what you want to major in, um, having your transcripts uploaded, having contact information, um, so having some of those things ready to go will really help as well. So just hitting as many platforms as you can. Yeah. And I saw coach Kofi asked, is there like a common app style way to get film to coaches, which is a good question. Like I'd say the closest thing to that is probably like an NCSA profile or something like that, where you're part of a database that coaches can, can search. Um, 
any other any other thoughts in terms of especially how how people can get seen right now from a college coach's perspective? What about Alan and Bray? Especially you, Alan. I feel like you played on a high school team, Alan, with um with a like a bunch of guys who were I'd say pretty good, but I think like you were getting recruited more than a lot of them, especially at certain points this year. Like, what do you think the difference was? I think <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you. But one thing I could say is back to the question you said, would you rather play on a, on a team that has a, a sponsor? I would say a lot of these kids, for example, like they'll play on an EYBL team, let's say, right? But they won't get as much minutes. So it's like, Coaches are not going to see you if you're not playing rather than playing on a pretty solid team where you could play a couple more minutes and you could get yourself seen. You know what I mean? So the the one thing I would say is like, you know, I got fortunate because I was, I was in the, the Riverside impact program where I got to get seen by a lot of coaches and stuff, you know, but the one thing I would say is do what you think is like for everyone in the chat, do what you think is the best for you. Don't do it. Don't do things based off of what other people say. Like, oh, you're playing on this team, blah, blah. Don't worry about that. Because at the end of the day, if you can play, you obviously, if you can play and you're good, you're going to get seen eventually. All you have to do is keep working and stuff. And if you show, like, you can ball, no matter what team you're going to – you play on, coaches are going to see you. So, therefore, you know, don't, don't make decisions based off of what other people think. Do what you think is best for you. That's the only thing I would say. For sure. Don't get caught in the hype. I appreciate that, Alan. And then Braylon, coming from like a pretty small high school in Brooklyn, um, like what would, what would you say just from your end? I would say you got to like know a lot of people. The more people you know, the more connects you'll have. And like when I met you, you, you have a lot of connects with a lot of college coaches. So that helped me. Like reach out to coaches and stuff like that, so I can get recruited, and also playing for you. Like our team was solid, and I would get minutes, so that made college coaches see me. Yeah, definitely right, and that's like again getting to know people. You could put emails, social media is a great way to connect, especially with different programs, and then just being nice and open to everyone that you come across. I want to say what's up to Coach Derek from TC three two. Thanks for joining, but I think that's really really great advice. Um, any, any other questions about this before we go over to the next tip? Cool. All right. So the next one is pretty straightforward, right? Sure. This is something your teachers, families, counselors tell you always work on your academics. Um, right. Like what that looks like showing improvement over time, right. Getting along with your teachers and counselors. Again, like they're a part of your recruiting process. I saw, um, coach Robinson put that before, uh, right? Your transcript is probably gonna be the biggest thing that decides like who can recruit you. Like you can wanna go to whatever college, like your transcript is really gonna determine that. And then test scores are really important too. And we talked about super scoring test scores, right? A couple of weeks ago, you wanna take your SAT or your ACT multiple times to give yourself the highest score possible. But um, yeah, any thoughts on this academics? I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but like, I don't think we can stress this enough. You know, one thing I, I would add is if you have the opportunity to take the, and it's down here, but on the, on the slide, but if you have the opportunity to take the SAT or the ACT um, multiple times, take, take it as many times as you can. Um, like give yourselves as many opportunities as possible. You know, we had a lot of guys this year that, um, you know, they were 20 points short or 30 points short of being accepted and they didn't take the SAT a second time around. Um, because they thought they were okay. So if you have the opportunity to take those tests, like take advantage of every opportunity and put yourself in the best position with as many options as possible. For sure. The one, the one thing I would say about this is like, to get into certain colleges, this is like a, for everybody, you could only do this once. This is a lifetime opportunity, you know? So instead of, you know, doing other things that, you know, like, you don't want to be that person that 10 years from now you could talk to your friends. Yo, remember when we went to this party? You know, focus on your academics because 
that's something that comes once in a lifetime. You can't go back, you know, once you make your decision for college and say, yeah, I wish I would have, you know, I wish I would have took school more serious, you know? Parting is waiting for you after college, in college, but for right now, focus on your academics. That's the only thing I would say. Yeah, I see a question now from Benny. Like, should I take both the ACT and the SAT? I really think it's better to focus just on one. They're different tests, right? So you don't want to be preparing for two different things at the same time. Like, I know you go to Stevenson. Um, you guys had a really, really good year. So congrats on that. Like, as if you're going to a DOE high school in New York City, you're already taking the SAT. Um, I would say it probably makes the most sense to continue focusing on the SAT because you're already going to take it right for free once in school. Um, I would say if the SATs like really was really hard, if you felt like you really underachieved um, and the ACT might be better then maybe reconsider. But on the whole, if you're already taking the ACT, I would mm. stick with that. And I would only really focus on one of those. Um, any other questions? I know we've been talking a lot about academics in the other workshops too. Um, does every school require an essay? No right? But you would want to have an essay because some schools might and a school might hit you up in November and say, hey, we really like you as a player. And you might be like, I really like you as a school. But if you don't have an essay, that's a that's a hard spot to be in. Cool. Um, throwing it over to, to Coach Clores and Coach Abe, like we're talking, I know, primarily from the Division Three level too, but you guys have coached at the at the scholarship level. How has academics affected recruitment there? Uh, yeah, I would say, and again, it depends on the school and the conference. You know, I, you mentioned I was, I was at Dartmouth for a year, which is Ivy League, so it's technically not scholarship, but it's Division One. And then um, at, at Davidson and Siena, uh, it was tough. You know, there there were actually times where we it was harder to get a student into Davidson than it was in Ivy League schools. So because there there's like the academic index in Ivy League, which is kind of a formula where. Um, you're able to bring some students in that are maybe slightly lower academically, but you got to balance it with students who are higher. And that's something that we, we didn't have at, at Davidson or Siena, but um, th those are probably the biggest differences, Yona. Yeah, and grades definitely still matter, is what I'm hearing too. Extremely, 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 extremely. yep, yep. And, and you know, in Division One and Division Two, you have the Clearinghouse, uh, or, or, I'm trying to, they don't call it the Clearinghouse anymore, they call it the Eligibility the, Center, yeah. Yeah, the Eligibility Center, yep. And in Division Three, we don't have that, so it's up to each school to determine if that student's qualified for that school. So uh, it's just a, a little bit different process. But like you said, taking the SAT or the ACT is extremely important, and then your uh, your, your unofficial transcript is important too. Sure. Um, anything else? In terms of yeah. academics, questions, or advice? Yeah, Coach Clores. Um, so at, at Stack, our, our academic standards were a little bit different than, than Davidson and Siena, but we had many guys that um, the difference between getting a full scholarship and not getting into the program was either not being eligible or we might have had two comparable players for a scholarship, and we always looked at the one with the better grades um, as a differentiating factor. So even though there might be different levels of academics at different schools, it could be the difference between you getting a scholarship and not getting a scholarship, or at a division three school, having an opportunity to get into a school and maybe get some academic money. That's another part of it too, is you can go to a division three school, you might not get an athletic scholarship, but the difference between a three, two and a three, five, that could be a few thousand dollars for you, where, wherever you go. So I, I think that's really important too. So. Again, the higher your scores are, the more options you're going to give yourself. Yeah. And just a reminder, like your GPA is starting in ninth grade through really the end of 11th grade. It's not like only 11th grade when you start applying to college or grades only start counting there, right? It's like all your grades um, from when you start high school. Two quick questions. Should your essay be pre-written, Benny? I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but I would say you should definitely write multiple drafts of your essay. You shouldn't just write it and send it in one night. You should have teachers look at it, counselors look at it, family members look at it. Um, and then how much do you have to pay for NCA eligibility? It costs $90 to register with the eligibility center. But if you have a fee waiver, if you were able to take the SAT or ACT for free, um, then you can register for the eligibility center for free. Definitely keep the questions coming. Hopping over to the next one. So we said always work on your academics. Always work on your game. This one's pretty straightforward, um, right? Like 
the things I would say before throwing it to coaches is like work now for the level that you want to be at. Like if you want to be a division one basketball player, like find out what division basketball players do, right? They probably are in the weight room for an hour a day on the court doing skill work at least an hour a day, then doing practice, right? That's like four hours of working on themselves. Don't wait to become a division one basketball player to start working like a division one basketball player, right? Like if that's your goal, start working like that now. And then the second is like, watch different levels of basketball, particular ones that you strive to play at. A lot of people will say like, I don't want to go division three and they've never watched a division three game before, which is ridiculous. Right? So those are the two things I would say, anything that coaches you want to highlight or questions really from anyone else. Yeah. You know, I would say the, the line between, you know, a low D one or a high D two or high D three guy is, is very fine. And a lot of times, you know, a, someone who maybe goes division three, you know, maybe they're just not physically ready, but they get a lot of minutes their freshman year and sophomore year, but now all of a sudden they're a junior and they've played so many minutes and they're almost further along than maybe that low D one guy who had to sit for a year or two. So um, kind of like your question about the AU program, you know, would you want to shoe sponsored or not? Um, you know, would you maybe rather play 20 plus minutes, 30 minutes as a, as a freshman or wait till your junior year? You know, and, and again, there is no right or wrong, but um, it's just something to think about. For sure. Anything else that as a basketball player, people should be keeping in mind um, that want to play on the next level when they're in high school? Almost everybody at the college level is, is one of the best players where they came from. And so the sooner that you develop the ability to learn how to do things without the basketball in your hands. Um, the better a guy you are to recruit, um, the easier your transition will be because um, you're not going to live with, no, you know, unless you're the exception as a, as a freshman, you're probably not going to live with the ball in your hands in college. Can you defend? Do you know how to move when you don't have the ball? Um, you pick up on how hard you have to practice every day. That's a huge adjustment. You know, we tell the guys when you go to college, you, you know, uh, I had a couple 24-year-olds this year. They were grown men, you know, and so now you're not practicing against the JV team. You're practicing against grown men every day. Uh, just figuring out how to deal with some of that stuff is um, going to make your transition easier. I do want to interject, though. Um, I will change the first line. It says work now for the level you want to be at. I say work hard to be a college basketball player because the difference between a college basketball player and a high school ball player is really tremendous when you actually think about it. As Coach just alluded to, you are playing against grown men. A senior in high, sc a senior in high school is normally an 18, 19-year-old kid. When they get to college, they'll be playing against potentially 23, 24-year-old grown men who will not just relent and let a younger person walk in the door and take their playing time. So work hard to be a college basketball player is what I would change that line to um, for all you kids that are paying attention to. So I don't, I don't judge division one, two or three to be any different. I judge it to be college basketball. And that means more that you guys want to play at that level as opposed to what division you play at. So um, not to make all the coaches wrong or right. I just think that they need to understand it takes a lot of hard work to be a collegiate basketball player, period. For sure. 100%. Appreciate that, Tom. Um, Allen or Braylon, right? You guys are about to make this jump. I don't know if we're scaring you. About to play against some grown men. Um, anything Alan's that you guys scared. have been... I feel like, I yeah. feel like you got to be disciplined all the time. Always got to listen to what the coach is saying and just go on hard all the time. Yeah, what do you mean by... Like, say more about that, Braylon. You mean in high school, in college? What do you mean exactly? Yeah, like, always be disciplined. Like, listen to people when they tell you to do things and stuff like that. And just go hard all the time. Yeah, agreed. Sometimes a coach will say something and you might not know exactly what they mean or you might not agree, but like arguing yeah. with them Owen is probably it's not, not going to help you better. Exactly. It's not going to help you then or in the future. I think that's a really good point. Alan, anything from your end? I see you flexing a little bit. I mean, I'm skinny, but besides that, all I have to say is, you know, basketball sometimes is not a – it is – I mean, it goes both ways. It's about strength and physicality and all that. But if you can think, like, if you can use your brain to your advantage, 
you could definitely, you know, beat these older or, you know, guys who are stronger than you. That's one thing I would say. And I just think, like, you know, at the end of the day, 24, 23, 22, 21, 28, 19, 18 years old, at the end of the day, it comes down to who wants it more and who's going to work hard. That's basically all I have to say. For sure, right? And Coach Derek said, find who you are as a player and work to improve your intangibles around your identity. You want to say more about that? You can come off mute if you want. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just uh, – a lot of kids just get caught up on uh, – just um, having to score, 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 score. And, like, uh, not a lot of kids uh, don't know that, you know, certain coaches are looking for, you know, certain type of player that can do, you know, certain type of things, whether whether it is, you know, to defend, you know, rebound, you know, being able to uh, defend uh, multiple positions and, you know, all the above. Definitely. It goes back to what Coach Shona was saying, too. Like, in high school, you might be the guy with the ball who's able to ISO and get a basket when your team needs. Like, your college team probably has a bunch of dudes ahead of you in that regard, especially coming in as a freshman. Um, being able to do things without the ball and the little things really important. Um, right? Anything you guys want to add? Brandon, this is in the middle of you getting interviewed at the gym rat. Anything else you guys want to add from your perspective? I think you guys have said some good stuff so far. Cool. Nah, that's about it so far. Got you. So next is a would you rather, A or B again, right? So again, no right or wrong answers. I'm going to ruin the question and let you know there's nothing right or wrong. But in the chat, would you rather go to a Division II school that is average academically on a partial basketball scholarship or go to a Division III school that is strong academically on a financial aid academic scholarship? Curious to hear what people say. Throw it in the chat, A or B. So you guys don't want to play scholarship level basketball is what I'm hearing so far. Yeah, I see some A's now too. Here come the A's, A or B, right? There's no right or wrong answer on this. Now everyone's saying, hey, that was quick. I feel like my chat's broken. All right, here come the Bs again. Cool. So no right or wrong answer on this for sure, right? But that goes to the next point, which is figure out what's important to you, right? And that doesn't mean that you need to focus only on one thing, but these are things that you should be thinking about, right? Not just from as a basketball player, but like, as someone who, if you're finishing high school soon, you're getting ready for the next step in your life. What is important to you, right? What are your goals after college, right? Again, like if you want to go into business and live in a city, right? Um, you pr maybe want to look at colleges that have strong internship programs and business programs. That's important. What type of college? You want to go to a big school, a small school, far away, close to home, in a city, in the country. Again, is there a major? Is there a coaching style you really want to play for, right? Um, this is my question. This is almost, I might make this the next A versus B, um, winning versus playing time. And then like also just making sure you're talking to students and players at each school to get more information too. Like the winning versus playing time, I think from a basketball perspective is really real. Um, everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to play. But I think it's important for you to think about like which one means more to you, right? Are you comfortable sitting on the bench for two years for a program that wins a lot because winning feels good? right? Or if it comes down to it, are you more comfortable going somewhere that hasn't won as much, hasn't had as much success, but you're going to have more of an opportunity to have that early on, even though that means you might lose more early on and losing sucks. So these are different types of things to think of. Um, college coaches, anything else that you would say, like in terms of helping people figure out what's important to them going through this process? What, what, Sorry, go ahead, Sean. You got it. Right. One of the suggestions I would have is just uh, don't don't get caught up in level all the time. D1, D2, D3. Um, look at at the right fit for you at, as well. Um, that could be, you know, how interested is is the coaching staff and the and the school that's looking at you. That could be how many students are graduating, how many players are on the current roster at a school, like. 
these are all, all certainly things to, to look at and consider. And I think that if you find the right fit for you, whatever level that is, D1, D2, D3, um, you're going to have a really good experience. You know, I've seen a lot of guys who have gotten really caught up in a particular level or a particular type of school, um, and it, it's made it difficult to find the right fit. So just be open, do your research, look at the program, see what the interest is like, and, and find what the right fit is for you. That's a, the best advice I have on it. Exactly. That was what I was going to say, too. Yeah. And I think like something I've heard people say, which I think is good advice is like, make sure you're going to a school that if even if you weren't playing basketball, you'd still be comfortable there. Because like, if you're playing basketball, that's maybe four hours of your day, on average, that's still 20 other hours that you're spending at that school, right for the next two or four years. So like, make sure if God forbid, you got injured, or you weren't able to play or something like that happened. Um, make sure it's still a school you're comfortable with. Um, Alan and Braylon, Alan, we're going to talk more about this with you in the future too, but like, how did you guys figure out what was important to you going through this process? Mm. Which, in what, what case? You're talking about the winning versus playing time? Or Just what? in general, like, how did you figure out, like, when you were looking at different options, like, what places you were interested in, and then once you had options, how to decide between those options? Um, the one thing I could say is, I think it's, for me, it's all about to go where you, where they, where you're being shown love. You know what I mean? Cause like, for example, you wouldn't want to go to a school that, you know, you're so like, my main decisions came off of base of like college visits. You know what I mean? Cause like everyone, every coach, no offense to any of the coaches here. But every coach is going to tell you, like, you know, say the good things and stuff about it. You know what I mean? So I feel like once I got to, you know, sleep over and see how things are, I got to realize what I really wanted, you know? You want to go somewhere you love, you know? You don't want to go to a college just less because of, let's say, just because of the name. You want to go where you're being loved and, you know, you're going to spend, you know, you want to have a family, you know, because you're going to spend the next four years of your life here. For sure. Braylon, anything to add from your end in terms of like how you kind of like looked at schools and figured out what was important to you? Nah, I just said most of it. And it's also like the community and the people in it. Like, yeah, if they make it a good school and stuff like that. You want, I know you went on a visit and you were like, I do not like this school. Like, can yeah, you it was, talk about what that was like? I went to like, I went to Cuba College and like, it was like, the people there were different. The community was in a desert or a farm or whatever. Really, you and put them on blast, man. Sorry, sorry, but I, I really didn't. the name. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't Getting like dirty. it. Yeah, right. And that helps you figure out that you wanted to be close to a city, right? You wanted to have yeah. more diversity around you. Like, those things were really, really important to you. Because it's one yeah. thing, like, Every school looks beautiful on the on the website, right? Or the picture a coach sends you. But actually getting to see it is really important. Um, and I, I asked the students on campus, like, yeah, do you really think I should come here? They was like, yo, it's really not a good choice. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> right? So do it. for everybody on the last. Yeah, right? Because coaches, again, are going to say the good things. But checking in with other people who are going to be more, more neutral, too. Um, I'm going to send this to you guys afterwards as long as you um, fill out the Google link. This is a form that we all filled out at Riverside Impact where it's just like kind of breaks down. We call them fit factors, like for different fit factors, um, your preference, like what you would prefer in terms of location, like where and how far from the city, how big the college is, and then strength of preference, right? Like you might say, oh, I want to go to a big school, but it might not, it, that doesn't matter so much to me. Or you might say, I want to go to a big school, and that's one of the most important things for me, right? So it's things you prefer and how much you prefer them. I'll send it to you. I think it's a helpful tool um, when people go through it. And then there's also the first page is more college questions, and the second page is more basketball questions. Playing time, winning team, playing style, coaching style, stuff like that. Um, so I'll send this to everyone. Any questions? Thank you.
about like, like you guys again are, are high school students about to go through the process. No questions at all. We got great people here. We got college coaches. We got guys who have just gone through the process. Hey, Yona, Yona, I would just say, and guys, for all the younger guys on here, you know, you're, you're not supposed to know it all. You're not supposed to have all the answers. So just lean on, on your coaches, high school, club, talk with your family. Um, it's amazing where the game can take you. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, obviously, with, with Yona, uh, Coach Clores, you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm from Minnesota. Um, I was able to coach on the East Coast for about eight years. And without basketball, I'm probably not on this call, right? And without basketball, maybe most of us aren't connected. So understand that where you decide, it is four years, but it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to live there the rest of your life. And so um, whether you want to stay home or you want to go away or whatever, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, like tip number five, figure out what's important for you. Um, but just don't don't let distance um, necessarily scare you when, when you're making decisions. Definitely. One of the other things I would I would add to that, and I know obviously it's impossible to do right now, but when you have the opportunity in the fall or whenever that case is, um, do go on as many campus visits as 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 you can, because especially if you're not sure, you might go to a campus. I know when I was looking at colleges. Uh, my family had been talking about Fairfield University, which is where I ended up going to school. And for some reason, I had it in my head that I did not feel like visiting Fairfield University. And then when I did take that tour and I got to campus, I, I decided I loved it. And it was exactly what I was looking for. So if you're not exactly sure what you're looking for, taking some of those visits may either eliminate certain things for you or highlight some of the things that you like that may be more important to you than you thought. For sure. Um, you guys can definitely keep questions coming in the chat. Next thing I want to touch on is, right, we're talking about, like, how to make that decision. Um, I want to throw it over to Alan and Coach Schoner. So Alan is actually going to play for Coach Schoner um, next year at SUNY Poly. So we have the luxury of kind of hearing both sides of a recruiting story. So I can ask you guys questions if you know, you're not sure, but I'm really just throwing it over to you. Like, what was it like Coach Schoner to recruit Alan? And like, what made you interested in him? Um, and yep. then Alan, like, what was it like being recruited by Coach Schoner? And what made you decide that that was the place that you wanted to be, which you talked a little bit about it before. But like, yeah, I'm throwing it over to you guys. All right, bud, you want to go first? No, nah, that's all you, Coach. That's all you. right, so... So I, I've known Yona for a little while. I actually have one of his older guys. Um, from upstate in our program now. And so when he sent us, um, you know, his roster from Riverside last year, my assistant went out and watched them play. I believe it was at the gym rat, Yona. And, um, you know, he liked a bunch of the guys. And so I watched them on film and I liked Alan. I had an opportunity to go down in the fall and watch him play. I saw him play at the academic elite. And I liked him and he played well. And then the next morning I got up and um, there was another event. I'm not going to put the event on blast like uh, Braylon did, but it was not, it, w it wasn't as good as the academic elite that, you know, the games weren't good. And here was Alan, it was 930 in the morning and the dude was picking up people full court and he was playing just as hard as he was the night before. Um, like it really meant something to him. And I, I drove, myself back upstate that day and said like that's a dude that we got to have in our program um and then another thing that really you know kind of just cemented the case for him as we were going through you know Yona mentioned he played at a, a really good high school in the catholic um high school league and i think for him personally just from our conversations his year on, on a personal level was all over the place and one thing that he never ever did is he never bagged his coaches which is a huge turnoff for me when, you know, when you get a guy who's crushing his coach as a coach, I'm saying, they're saying, well, like, if it's not good for you at our place, you're going to be crushing me like that. And he just, you know, he handled it like a young man. Um, and the more we got to know each other, um, you know, again, we talked about a lot of the things beside putting the basketball in the basket 
And just listening to him tonight, I said it's Yona last night. Like, that's a dude that we're really excited to coach. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, Alan. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, my fault, my fault. I was just going to say, you know, when I – when before I even got recruited, I just feel like, you know, like this is to everybody in the chat. Um, anytime you have an opportunity, you know, you have to look at it as an opportunity that, that someone else doesn't have. So, for example, Braylon went with me both times. You know, that academic elite camp, you know, there was a lot of coaches, you know, and I still gave it my all, you know. And, you know, like Coach Schroeder said, the next morning, you know, not to do what Braylon said, but um, it was more, you know, it was like, I'm not going to say quiet, but, you know, I guess everyone was sleeping or something, or I don't know, but, you know, like, I realized, like, any opportunity and chance I had, you have to give it your all, you know? You can't, like, your last breath, you know, you can say you're tired or whatever, but you have to give it all. And, you know, like, I I'm a firm believer that no matter what you do, if you if you work hard and you got you do what you have to do, um, you know, things good things are going to happen. And, you know, I found Coach Shooter. And, you know, the best thing I like about Coach Shooter is, you know, that, you know, I was on a Zoom chat with our college team, and he had people there um, in the chat from 10 to 15 years ago that he coached. Now, like Coach Shooter said before, it's more than just putting the ball in the basket, you know. Every time I ask one of their – one one of the players on the team, you know, what, what do you like most about Coach Shooter? And, you know, what they say is, is, you know, he makes it feel like a family, you know? And, you know, like Coach Schroner said, in my high school, my la my senior year wasn't the best year you guys expected where, you know, you get all the minutes and, you know, and this and that. But, you know, even at my lowest point, I realized to myself, no matter what happens, I'm not going to give up, you know, and say, no, nah, I'm not doing this no more. I'm going to fight through it. And I personally think y'all can look at me crazy, you know, but I think I had the best senior year of my life because I would say one thing about my senior year. It was different, you know, because of the coronavirus and stuff. I would say my senior year for basketball was the best thing because, you know, mentally it got me to a different level that, nobody could get in my head but me you know I realized that nobody can get my get my get in my head besides me you know so even after everything was happening the fact that a kid like me who you know sometimes gets angry could still manage to you know fight through it and still have that attitude like all right this is gonna happen tomorrow I practice you know, no, no offense to my teammates, but I'm, I'm going to give them a run for their money. You know, I'm going to push everybody. I'm going to be the leader of this team, either, even if they say I'm not the leader of this team. And, you know, there's a couple people who probably see me play from Brad Stevenson, all that. And, you know, I feel like God, every, God does everything for a reason, for a reason coming from a Catholic school. And I would say the best thing is that, you know, um, it got my, my weakest point was, which is my mentality. It got me to a different level that, you know, I had to think outside the box to be who I am today. So I feel like if my senior year would have went like everybody else's, you know, you play the most minutes, you get a, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today. So I'm proud that that happened to me. You know what I mean? And, you know, the thing about Coach Schroeder that I love most is, you know, he's always checking up on me, you know, and I haven't played basketball for him yet, you know. And, you know, like, his players say it, you know, like he might, he might be, you know, um, hard on the court, but it's just to make you a better person. And, you know, that's someone I need in my life, you know, for the next four years, I don't want to, you know, get lost, you know, cause I'm not with my mom, you know, I want to be, you know, where he, for like, he's going to be like a father figure for me, you know, he's going to, you know, push me to be as great as I am, even at my lowest points, you know, or maybe even at my highest points, you know, and teach me life lessons that, not many people can get, you know, and that's that's the main thing you want to do when you go to college because, you know, college is is great and all, you know, you're by yourselves if, you know, no, depending on where you're going. But if you can, like, be in a family for the next four years, you will feel like you're not missing your family, you know what I mean? So that's the main thing. And, you know, when I went on campus, I didn't even know the players like that. And, you know, like, they – they 
they took me in like I was one of them, you know? They treated me like family, you know, which was like, it was amazing to any other, you know, college visits that I went to, you know? They all, you know, brought me in and I, I talked to most of them every day, you know? Like, I have a streak with them on Snapchat, you know? And that's, that, that touched my heart because, you know, in a, in a world that we live in, as you can see, they're so nasty. To the fact that people show love to me and they didn't really know about me, the kid I could be, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. And that, that's why I decided to go to where I'm going, you know? So I want to interrupt for a moment. Alan, I'm listening to you talk with a lot of passion and you'd be surprised. I wish we had 2,000 of you in our program. You are giving heartfelt information to all the kids, and I couldn't appreciate it any more than what you've tried to describe to everybody. I will tell you this, pardon the noise in the background, um, there's going to be good days and bad days at whatever college that you choose to go to for everybody else that's in. You are correct. Your, your college coach that you've chosen to be part of your family and vice versa, just remember, you have to go to him also with your problems. Don't try and figure everything out yourself. That's part of the growing up process that all you kids need to understand. You now have a person who will hopefully guide you through your good days and your bad days. You will have good days and bad days because that's just part of growing up. The positive side to it all is you have a, a support system that you don't know you have. You have Riverside, and we can't manage every little aspect of every kid's life, but we can provide you with some resources, some, some thoughts, some positive moments that we can tell you about to bring you back to you know the good times. Kofi hasn't been mentioned at all, and Kofi, I'm sure, has been around you for the entire time that you've been with the program as well. You don't even know me, and for those who don't know me, I am the program director. I'm here for you, you just don't know it because we have so many quality people that are helping you. I never needed to care. You were in trusted hands. And I state that because you don't, you, you alluded to some things that are way more important than basketball. The world is in a crazy state right now. Everyone on these Zoom calls are here for a reason. They are here to provide every single child in this Zoom chat some support. These coaches are not recruiting right now. They're here because they're being a support system to Riverside, to Yona, to Kofi, to myself, to Riverside Hawks, and into their individual programs as well. So we've gone over the normal time that Yona really wants to go, but I find it to be very important that we impress upon everybody, this is bigger than basketball. What you just described is life, it's family, it's truth, it's support. And I'm very proud to hear you speak. And everyone listening is there for you. So never think you're alone. So I'll turn it back over to Yona. Um, we have another Zoom call tomorrow. And if anybody wants to be on it, please just say yes. It's more along the lines of what's going on in the world. Um, and then Kevin, who's our assistant, will reach out to you within the Zoom chat and send you the link to be a participant. It's a little bit reality check but I'm not trying to divide, to divert what Yona is doing right now. I could not be more happy with what Yona has produced in this entire process. And I sit on this in dumb awe, knowing that we have someone like Yona and the coaches that are supporting Yona doing this. So I'm becoming long-winded because I was affected by what you said. And that's because I have gone through it all because I'm probably really, really old. But Trust me, I, I, I love the fact that you have expressed yourself as a young man as well as you have. So, Yona, back to you. Sorry, everybody. But sometimes you have to take time out to acknowledge the people that are carrying the program in a positive way and those that are supporting them and the kids that are in the program as well. So, Yona won't do it. I'm doing it for him and Kofi. Appreciate that tone. A um, couple of things. So, first of all, I know a lot of people on this call are part of are on a Riverside team, but not everyone is. Um, at the end of this, I always put my email and phone number. Like anyone can reach out to me. You can pass my info along to your friends, to your family, um, to reach out to me for any questions with like the college or recruiting process um, at any point. Like this is what I'm passionate about doing is helping young people um, pursue their dreams, you know, both academically and when it comes to basketball, especially. Um, and then also if you go to our Instagram, Riverside Hawks, 
you'll see the information for the for the zoom call tomorrow and then last thing is Kofi if you could drop the Google form in one more time please fill out the Google form if you haven't already thank Kofi that was fast thank you um, so this way we can just send you more follow-up info but um thanks home for that we're gonna go this has covered a lot of good stuff we're gonna go like another 15 minutes I appreciate everyone's time if you need to hop off obviously completely understand that too but just want to give people like kind of a glimpse of where we're at right now um, Gonna move a little bit more quickly through these. We've touched through some of this. Oh, actually, slow down on this. It's your junior year, um, right? You don't have any solid looks or scholarship offers yet. There's a coronavirus happening. You can't play, right? It's hard, um, but you know they'll come. You get a text from assistant coach of a college you've never heard of before. They say they're interested and would like to tell you more about their school. You look it up. It's like a Braylon situation. It's a small division three school in the middle of nowhere. Um, what would you do in all honesty? And like this, there's again, there's no right or wrong answer, but just like if some people can kind of throw what they would do in this situation in the chat, that would be great. Jaden said I was talking to them. Then he's saying, I'm waiting it out to the last minute. I can hit them back next year. It's only 11th grade. I love the honesty. All right. Learn more about the school. Text them back. I see this. Anyone else? How would you handle this situation right here? Talk with them. Learn more about the school. Yeah. Right. I would show interest back. Cool. I think I would say, again, there's no right or wrong answers when it comes to recruiting. Um, I would say get back to everyone, right? Like, Benny, I hear you. You're like, I never know what's coming in the future. Um, but like, it, it takes two seconds to text someone back, right? There's no downside to kind of keeping that ball in there, especially if you don't have any other options yet. Um, I would say like, you want to respond to all calls, texts, and emails in a timely manner. One thing that drives me crazy with guys on the impact team was that they wouldn't save coaches numbers. I'm putting them on blast. Right? Like if you're talking to a college coach, save their number. So if they text you back, right, maybe it's a couple of weeks later, hey, what's going on? How's your season going? Or hey, it's our season opener tomorrow night. You're not like, oh shit, who is this person? Right? Make sure you save numbers and you can be honest, right? Again, you can say, hey, coach, what's up? I'm really looking for a division two or division one right now. Um, but that's still communicating back. Um, and I would never shut the door unless you're like 100% sure and you have another option that's solid. Um, coaches, anything to add on this? Or Braylon and Allen, anything to add on this? Yeah, so, uh, Yona, I think you're spot on. Like, I think uh, if a coach texts you, uh, especially if you don't have a, other offers, reach back out to the coaches, find out about the school, because you never know what the right fit is going to be for you. And this school that you might have never heard of, it might be the perfect fit for you, but you won't know unless you talk to the coaching staff. And even if it's not the right fit, at least now you know that, that would, that's not the right fit. But uh, the one thing you're doing is you're educating yourself on different colleges and you're giving yourself more options by getting back to these coaches. And I just think it's like the courteous thing to do. Like even if you're not interested at all for whatever reason, just getting back to someone, letting them know and being honest, I think it's a courteous thing to do. And I think it, it, it's the right thing to do too. Yeah, yeah you wanna, and just uh, to piggyback off uh, of Shiva here, you just you, you never know who that that coach may know you know and so may, maybe you are waiting for a division one or division two and you text that division three or nai or juco coach back and say hey thank you so much but i'm looking elsewhere and and if i got that i'm like man i'd be happy to pass your name on and there are a lot of times where i'll watch someone's film and i'll, I'll say man this guy's probably a higher level than us and the way he responds might dictate how i'm going to pass his name on to certain schools and and so i just think you you never know who you can help and you never know who can help you. So you might as well just treat everyone with respect and that'll go a long way. I couldn't agree more uh, with both coaches and communication is, is one of the foundations of our program. So it's something we take extremely seriously when you're here and it's something in the recruiting process um, that we look at. So it's just good to know in general, your communication with coaches is something that um, we, we pay attention to a lot. The one other thing I would say is if you are in that situation where you 100% know that you do not want to go to a certain school, it is okay to tell that coach. 
It, it is actually, it's actually probably better to tell that coach than to just disappear and, and, and not say, it. um, just like we, we can handle it. Uh, so we want you to be in the right fit too. So, um, if you know 100% that the school is not the option for you, um, just, just reach out and just let the coaches know so that they can move on and, and you can move on as well. And then, uh, sorry, uh, one last thing to say about this is if, uh, if you are in, a, if you're in contact with a coach, even if you're not overly interested, even if, but you're interested enough or you're kind of keep in contact with that coach, make sure you reply, make sure you make an effort to get back. Because especially with us, one of the things we say is we need to form relationships with players before we can bring them into our program. Because as a college coach, if we decide to take you into our program, we're making a four-year commitment to you. So we need to know who we're bringing in because you're a representation of our team to the entire campus and the community. So for, for, people, for recruits that don't get back to us and don't communicate well with us, it's really hard for us to make that commitment to that player because we just don't know you well enough. So if you, if you have even a semblance of interest in a school, when a coach reaches out to you, make sure you're open to communication. Make sure you get back. And if you don't have the time at that moment, let them know that. Let them know, hey, coach, I'm busy right now. I'm about to go for a workout. I, I have this to do. And the, then the coach will come get uh, contact you at a different time. But make sure you have an open line of communication so you can start building that relationship with that coach. Yeah. And reminder, we talked about this in the last workshop, but, like, you can apply to a lot of schools, right? Like, you can apply to up to six CUNYs, seven SUNYs, up to 20 schools on the Common App. Um, and if you're getting a fee waiver, right, for the SAT, like you can apply to all those schools for free. So again, even if something's not your number one choice, um, it's good to just at least be, be in touch. Cool. Um, if you have any questions or anything else to add, feel free to hop in. Next one is um, just reach out yourself. We talked about this before, but like, right? Like you want to be talking to coaches, right? If they don't hit you up first, you want to send them an email. We talked about before, you can find any coach's email out there. And then the other thing I would say is like, you want to have people in your circle that you trust, right? Like coaches, family members, counselors, right? And sometimes like they'll be in touch with a coach too, or with a college too, but you don't want to leave all your communication to people. Like whenever I talk to kids in high school and I'm like, Hey, like who's recruiting you? And a lot of kids will say like, I don't know my coach is handling that. Like, that's like a huge alarm bell for me. I'm like, whoa, like, so you don't even know where you're gonna consider spending the next four years of your life. Like, it's your future, right? So again, you can trust people and lean on people and ask them for help and have them communicate also, but like, you need to do some of that communication yourself. And if that's uncomfortable, right? Think about how even more uncomfortable it'll be to show up somewhere where you don't know the coaches, you don't know your teammates, you don't know the college, and now like, that's your home, that's your environment. So I would say like, it's just so important to not just leave that to other people. Um, questions or things to add on this? It's pretty straightforward. Cool. Um, we talked about this before, visit as many schools as you can. That's pretty much impossible right now. Hopefully we're get able to get through that. Um, I would say like, you wanna do an overnight like Alan was saying, so you get to see what type of people are in the school. Um, you want to see a practice, like that's where you, a coach can't fake their way through a practice, right? As a college player, you might play 25 games, but you're going to have 80 practices, right? And you might only play 10 minutes a game your freshman year, but you're going for two hours in practice. That's going to be such a big part of your experience. Obviously see games, you're going to go to class. It's college, right? You want to see what the class is like. Is it a big class, small class? What are professors like? And then we talked about before Braylon was like hitting people up on campus. Like, should I come here or not? Like, Ask questions, right? Get people's social media, hit them up later on, follow people on Snapchat, on Instagram to see what life is like in that college. Um, like even if you can't physically visit it, you wanna be able to virtually visit it as much as you can. Um, anything to add on this? Cool, and I would say like take your visits as early as possible. Again, we can't visit now. So many people wait to visit till the spring of their senior year and like, at that point, it's just really, really late in the process. Braylon or, or Alan, like anything you guys would add in terms of visits um, or communicating with coaches? Like I know like you guys took a couple of visits, talked with a lot of coaches. Anything to add from your end? Who gives you a good experience of 
like how the school is and like the whole environment and stuff like that. And I feel like it's just it's fun to be honest, going on a visit and like seeing different things and seeing where you're gonna be the next four years that you like. Definitely. Um, Alan, anything else to add? Kind of spoke on it before. All right, cool. Um, last two things I would say are like options or power, right? You want to choose a school is how I would put it. You don't want to at the last second, right? Just have one option. You're like, oh, I'm going again to be a student, to be an athlete at this place. Cause that's like the option I had left. Right. So you want to create as many options as possible, doing all those things we talked about before. Right. Reaching out, communicating, visiting, going through the application process. Right. Again, don't wait till the school hits you up to start applying to college. Right. Don't say I'm not going to do my common app. I'm not going to do my CUNY, my SUNY, unless a school is already recruiting me. You want to do those things on the front end as much as possible. I mean, coaches, is that something you guys see? I would think especially um, Coach Clores and up at Canton, Coach Shiva, like, is that something you guys see where people are just waiting too long? Yeah, so, um, yeah, w well, sorry, can you hear me? My screen keeps freezing. Yeah, we hear you great. Okay, uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to get, get kid. we want you on campus early. We want you to reach out to us early because we try not to over-recruit. And for you, if you if you reach out to us early and we're able to get you on campus early, and especially because we're rolling admissions, we can get your financial aid package and application uh, accepted early on. Now it gives you a little bit more time to make a decision. You get more time to make what the best decision for yourself. But in at one at some point in, later in the process, so now if we're in May and June, a lot of times we feel bad because we don't want to rush you on making your college decision. But if someone else that we're also recruiting commits in the same position because we're trying not to over recruit one position and we want to give a fair chance to everyone on our team, at some point we have to tell kids, and we did it this year, where we told them that we 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 think you're a really good player, but we don't have any much, we don't have any room on the team anymore. And it's just because some students waited too late to start their whole application process. So if you start that whole process early and do your visits early, it gives you more time to really think about and make the right decision for yourself. I, I don't know, just to, to add to that, I, I don't know if, if some of the other coaches have experienced this as well, but I know a lot of the recruits that we've talked to the past couple of years um, kind of had the process backwards a little bit. And what I mean by that is they would have their six schools and then they would want to narrow it down to one before applying to that school. So they would go through the whole process and make their choice and then apply or not apply. Um, it takes time, right? Schools have different timelines for how long their application process is. Um, those things, you know, you might be borderline to get into the school. If you have four or five schools that you are very interested in, apply early. And then after your applications are in, then you can start to narrow down and make your decisions. But don't narrow your choices down to one option and then pigeon yourself into that choice, if that makes sense. Um, so just make sure that if you're interested in a certain amount of schools, apply early. Um, don't decide on a school and then decide to apply. Um, do it the, the opposite way, the way that we're learning here. Got a couple of questions. Um, one is, are there opportunities for walk-ons? So I'll start with that one at your programs. Uh, so for us, uh, it depends year to year. Uh, this past season, we did have some room on the roster for walk-ons and it ended up working out really well. We took a walk-on who ended up being our six man and played big minutes for us by the end of the year. But uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to do the same thing this year. So it kind of just varies on – the, the size of the recruiting class we're bringing in and some of the amount of returns we have and the size of our roster overall. Sure. And the second question was, do you recommend reaching out to a head coach or an assistant coach? I would say both. Reach out to as many people as possible. I don't know if anyone has anything to add to that, but I would say like, you just want to, again, like give yourself as many options as possible. And that means open as many lines of communication as you can. Agreed. Definitely. Um, and then this is the last one, like know your timeline. Again, 
right? Like these are all things that you want to put yourself in position to do. Know the time that comes with that, right? You want to finish all your applications um, as early as you can for both colleges and for financial aid. If you're applying for financial aid, you want to know the deadlines for the colleges you're applying to in particular. So like coach A, but McAllister, like I know you guys like to do your work early, right? So that means like getting your applications in really early. And then this is something, it always depends on your high school, but like Ideally, you want to know what schools are recruiting you before your senior year of high school starts, right? You don't want to say like, oh, I'm not going to worry about this stuff. Like I'm going to blow up my senior year in high school. First of all, you don't know what that's going to happen. And second of all, like coaches, you can speak more to this, but like college coaches are, they don't have a lot of time to recruit during high school season because it's their season already. So they're spending all this time with their team trying to win games, right? Trying to have a really good season. So when they do have a little bit of time to recruit, a lot of times they're just going to check in on people that they're already recruiting. So like what you really want to do is you want to have the schools that you're interested in and they're interested in you before your high school season starts. Because again, I would say December 1st is when you should have all your applications in, which is around when high school season starts. So you kind of want to have at least an idea at that point already. And that's especially true. I hate to say this, but like here in New York city, there are so many talented college basketball, talented high school players. Like it's going to be hard to stand out during the high school season. That's especially true for those of you playing in the PSAL. Again, I love PSAL. Like I try to have as many of those kids in our program as possible. Um, and we've done that, but like, if you're in the PSAL, it's going to be really hard to pick up a new look in season. It's really important to pick up your looks going into your senior season. I know, anything to add on that? Yona, yeah, I would just say, um, and going again, you talked about like, you know, options as power and things like that, but there's sometimes there's peace of mind of knowing like, hey, maybe you want to commit somewhere before your senior year starts. So now you know you can just enjoy your senior year and there's no stress, or you may want to play your senior year out and see what opens up. So um, there's nothing wrong with betting on yourself like that. That's certainly okay. But like you talked about, you know, with us and maybe some other schools on the call here, you know, our hope is to be done before your senior year starts. So before your first game, so then we can focus on our season, you guys can focus on your season. Um, and other colleges may have different deadlines. But again, just talking with the coach and, and figuring out what their deadlines are will, will help you guys um, as you move forward. Yeah. And then Robert asked, when's a good time to start? Yeah, I'd say if you're finishing your 11th grade year right now, this is the time. Start reaching out to coaches and a lot of pretty much everyone's sitting at home right now. So if you can send some emails, send some film, like that's what, uh, that's what everyone's looking for at this point. Um, any other, any other questions? Cool. I'm going to throw it. This is the, right. I would say this is homework. I'm going to send you guys a template and all these tips, but like introduce yourself to a college coach. I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, I'm going to email everyone. Again, if you can fill out this Google form, I will email you this. This is an outreach template. Sorry, coaches who are sick of getting the same email a million times. But if you're not sure where to start, um, right, like you want to individualize it. You want to send a different email to every coach. You want to call out their school and say why you're interested in the school. And then you want to have like your information in the email right? This is everything that you would need. Obviously, like put your own personality into it, but I'll send this out to everyone. And like, if you're not sure again, like how do I send an email to a college coach? This is hopefully um, a helpful starting point. Cool. And then all the college coaches that are here are throwing their emails in the chat. So you can pull them right there. Um, and I'll put that in the follow-up email to everyone as well, too. Um, Going to throw it over Braylon and Alan. Any final thoughts from your end? Any parting words of wisdom? I was thinking the Super Bowl game. That's about it. What was that? Sorry, you're coming. It's a little unclear. I said Super Bowl game. Oh. Hello? Repeat it. We can't hear you. Super Bowl game. Oh. It sounds like you in water, bro. Yeah. Brandon, can you put it in the chat? Can you type it out if you don't mind? And Alan, I'm going to throw it to you. Hold um, on. There you can hear me? Sound good. Go ahead. You go yeah, first. You. you can hear me? Yes. This is better. I said just keep your grades up and work hard and stay disciplined. 
Oh, what's up, Coach Linton? Coach Linton just got on from uh, from Nichols College. Oh, oh we're really? like literally wrapping up, but it is awesome to have you here. I'm so glad you made it. Um, anything you want to say? Introducing yourself, introducing these these city folk to Nichols College. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's up, fellas? I apologize for jumping on late. Um, one of my players actually organized a, a peaceful protest out here, um, so I wanted to go support him. Uh, but when Yona told me that this was going on, I, I had to figure out a way to jump on, even if for a couple minutes. Um, like I just put in the chat, I'm from Queens, you know, born and raised. I went to Holy Cross High School uh, way back, way back in the day, class of 06. Best class that's ever come through Holy Cross. But, um, you know, just it, this is really important and passion for me because I was in a lot of you guys' shoes. I don't know if this already been touched on or not, uh, but there's no magic wand you know it's not like you're gonna be playing cross versus christ the king and you think 100 coaches are watching that game you know to be frankly honest they don't really care and like coach Fiona was just saying the people that they know about are who they know about you got to do your work early that's one thing that i didn't do that's one thing that i wasn't really sure about my parents are jamaican they weren't up on the recruiting process um so use coach Fiona, um but also you guys are the most you know, knowledgeable come through high school. You know, go online, go to different colleges, email every basketball program in the country if you want to. Like, there's not, you know, the worst thing that could happen is a coach not get back to you or a coach say no. But just think about how many opportunities that you give yourself. So, um, Nichols College, we're located in Massachusetts. Um, you know, one of the better D3 programs um, in the area, in the country. You know, we want. Uh, 21 and nine last year, I uh, went to the NCAA tournament. Uh, this will be my second year coming up. I know all the head coaches that are on this call, great guys as well. Um, but there's a ton of opportunities out there for you guys. Don't limit yourself. Also, don't sit around waiting for something to come to you. Go, uh, go and get it. For sure. Thank you, coach. It was worth the wait. Um, really appreciate hey, it. Hey, and y'all see, I got queens. I still got the queens up on my wall. All right, that's never going to never gonna change. All right, so. I need more Queens guys up here at Nichols. For sure. Um, Alan, anything for you in terms of final thoughts from your end? I mean, all I would say to everybody in the chat that, you know, are in ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade or younger is, you know, like, just work hard, you know? Like, like um, the person who just, no disrespect, what's the coach who just came on from 06 from Holy Cross? Like he just said, you know, go get what you what you want, you know? Like, you know, tomorrow's not promised, you know? So if you want to go get something, you want to, you know, you want to play basketball in college, D1, D2, D3, that's on you, you know? Like, I mean, unfortunately, you know, you could be this tall, this tall, you know? But if you want to if you want to get somewhere, you have to work for it. It's just not coming. If everyone could be a millionaire in the world, you know, just everyone would be, you know? People work for it, you know? So you know, therefore, you know, like, don't waste your time also on stupid things, you know? For example, like, you know, there's a party, but you need to do a project. I would say do your project, bro, because, you know, you don't want to be 10 years from now talking to your friend, yo, remember that party, you know, when that project, you know, you could have been at a greater high school for that, you know? And one thing I would say is, like, if you know you can strive in grades, like, I'm like this, and I know... 85% of the people in here are like this. Sometimes the work is like too easy. You're just like, yeah, you know, I don't really care about it, you know? I would tell you, strive harder because, you know, 87 to 88 can get you more schools, you know? So I would say get your grades up as high as you can. You know, you want to, and anything you do, you want to you wanna realize that, you know, I, I left it all out there. I did as much as I can to get where I'm at. So there's no regrets in life, you know, like, for example, you know, you wish you could have played harder at this tournament, but you know, you was, you was lazy, you know, give it, give it your, give it your all, bro. Cause tomorrow is not promised. So, you know, if you want to do amazing things, do it now. That's all I got to say. For sure. Appreciate it. And I think the thing with, go ahead, Coach A. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say uh, final thoughts and guys, thanks everyone for your time. You know, you, you could be doing something else, but everyone's taking their time to be here. It's been fun obviously to see Yona, I know Coach Clora as well, uh, Coach Linton. We, we, uh, he was at, I was at voting for him, but um, 
it's just amazing where basketball can take you. I think all of the coaches would agree if we could trade shoes with you guys and be players once again, we'd do it. Playing's a lot more fun than coaching, and I love coaching. So I would trade spots with anyone on here right now. But uh, I don't think anyone has a time machine on here. So we just – all we can do is move forward. And, um, again, Yona, thank you for setting this up and whoever else set this up. Lastly, uh, Coach Schooner, you're going to have to get an Alan Rodriguez jersey in the bookstore because I want to buy one. So, <laughs> Alan, if you, talk, if you talk a quarter of as much on the court as you do now, he's not going to take you off the court. I can't so, wait. <laughs> so, dude, I'm serious. I'm not joking, man. Alan, like, it's infectious. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. So just, just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, I'm, I'm cheering for you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Any other final thoughts before we wrap it up? Last thought, we are trying to still have the Academic Elite coming up sometime during the year. So, coaches, please stay in, in touch with Yona and myself. As far as the date, kids that are eligible, we are trying still to have the Academic Elite coming up. Don't forget to text YES for the um, invitation for tomorrow's life lesson from a lawyer about the world going on nowadays. Blah. Go, Leona. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, next steps, right? Always try to leave with some something actionable. Like, have your info available, um, your grades, which is your transcript, um, so you know it, so you can send it out, your test scores, um, and video if you can. Obviously, not everyone has video, and right now that really sucks if you don't. But if you do have video, or if you can like even get high school game film to make a video, that's really, really important. Work on your grades. Um, it says work on your grades and academics that meant to be your game and your academics. Apologize for that. Um, start figuring out what's important to you. And the best way to figure out like what's important to you is to talk to people that know you, right? And to talk to people you trust. Um, if you're in 11th grade, start reaching out to college coaches right now. If this is something, even if you're not sure, if you're like, I think I want to play ball in college, um, really start reaching out, right? We got some emails in the chat right now. You can Google any college coaches email. Um, and then the last piece is make sure, right, come through. We got one more workshop in the series next Wednesday, 7 o'clock. It's about paying for college. Um, it's going to talk about both financial aid and scholarships. I can guarantee you, you will not get better information anywhere in terms of helping you pay for college, especially if you want to play a sport um, in college. So we're going to be going through that next Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Um, and then lastly, Kofi, if you can throw the Google form in, if you have not uh, filled out the Google form yet, this is how we're going to send you follow-up information, including a video of this, all the forms. Please, please fill that out. If you filled it out on the other weeks, that's great. Um, but if you haven't, right, please fill that out now. I know it's some, some people, it's their first time joining us. And we really appreciate that. Um, that is it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, college coaches. I'm not going to name all you guys, but thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you, Braylon, Allen. It's been awesome seeing you guys grow, continue to grow. Um, but appreciate you guys sharing your time and your story tonight. Um, and I'm put uh, just in the chat for me, my email address and my phone number. You guys can literally reach out to me at any point with any thoughts, any questions. I'm always available. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jonas.